The helms of the guards have a strange shape, high-crowned with long cheek guards, close-fitting to the face. Above are set the wings of seabirds, but the helms gleamed with a flame of silver, for they were indeed wrought of mithril, heirlooms from the glory of old. A happy souls miss to all from the game table. I'm Fontis, and today my gift to you is to just shut up and get on with the linguistics. First up today, Gwyn City and Orlando, comprised of Anor, Quenyan, Anar, the Sun, Lawn, which is derived from either the Quenyan, Lawn, Flooded, or a Deep Pool, the Sindarin, Lond, which is a Great Haven or Narrow Path, or the Quenyan, Lana, Dark. And finally, Do, which is a diminutive of Dor, the Quenyan, Endor, for Land, the Sindarin, Dur, an Evil Place, or the Sindarin do a dimness, or dark. So Anorlando can be defined as the land flooded in sunlight, the sun's protected haven, or the land of the dark sun. And given these word components, we can give a definition for New Londo, the flooded dark, the narrow path to dark haven, or the dark evil place. And we can extend that to Londor, the evil haven, the deep pool of evil, the flooded dark, or the great haven of evil. Next we have Irithil, from the Sindarin, Ayr, Wynn, and the Sindarin, Ithil, meaning moon. Initially, I thought it was il Ithil, which would mean the moon, but a little digging suggests that Irithil is a direct quote from a poem titled The Song of Luthien, the first line goes, Ir ithil amen erukun, literally meaning, When the moon, the child of God. In its entirety, the poem reads, When the moon, the child of God, having watched for us, shines heaven's jewel. Flower and tree, listen in silence. O lady of the west, kindler of stars, I, the nightingale, sing to thee. Here, the singer Luthien uh, sings of a Silmaril, a special jewel made in the Undying Lands that she and the human Baron have been tasked to find so they may wed. Long story short, they get it. But their descendant, Erendil the Mariner, goes to the Undying Lands where a goddess is supposed to rekindle the jewel as a star, but instead uses its power to aid the gods against the first Dark Lord and his race of dragons, with an army of eagles led by their king, Thorindor, the root of Thorland. Now, the name Arendil itself is derived from Old English, uh, Ariandel, which means a holy light, which shows that Tolkien had always meant for the character to have um, a kind of savior purpose, which kind of fits in with the father Ariandel in the expansion. And while they're phonetically similar, the spelling is enough that I think we can find something closer. And we do. So Quenyan, Arian, Fiery Maiden, and Del, Abhor, Fear, and Disgust. And this ain't just any hottie, it's the spirit who guides the physical sun. So that makes Father Ariandel, the abhorrer of flame, he who loathes the sun, and not a fan of those things which are kindled or driven by fire. Sticking to the painted world for a moment, let's talk about the Millwood Knights. Quenya, Milya, a longing to, woe, to be together with, and Alda, tree. They miss their tree. Speaking of, have you ever been curious about the spirit trees? I hope so. Otherwise, the next minute is not going to be very interesting to you. In the ancient age of Middle Earth, before the sun and moon, the land was unformed. It was dark. Aside from some stars, the only light to be had anywhere was provided 
by the two great spirit trees that lived with the gods. One was golden with a fiery fruit, the other silver with deep blue-green leaves. They were Middle-earth's first good tourist attraction, and the elves came in droves. One tourist was so inspired, he used the tree's light to make the three heavenly jewels mentioned earlier, which was really surprising because it made absolutely no goddamn sense. But they were really pretty, so everyone was cool with it. Well, not exactly. In a not-so-surprising turn of events, the Dark Lord attacked the light, um, with an actually quite surprising giant spider ally who smashed the trees while he grabbed the jewels. They got away, but the elves were really, really pissed. And they followed, stopping only to pocket some of the uh, silver tree's seeds and to kill some elves for their boats, leaving to uh, follow the Dark Lord to his stronghold. Now, back in the Undying Lands, everyone was sad that their trees died. So, using the last fiery fruit and silver green leaf, the sun and moon were respectively kindled by the goddess mentioned before, and the spirits were chosen to guide them in the sky. This started the whole calendar thing with days, nights, weeks, months, and they all needed names. Um, I'm only going to give you one right now because I'm not getting into it. Now, the elven calendar has six days, for reasons, and one of those days celebrates the two trees. That is, Aldia, from Quenyan, Alda, tree, and Uya, the adjective suffix. Later, the human kingdom descended from Arendil would add a seventh day to the week in honor of the mariner. At the time, they renamed Aldia to reflect the spirit tree on a hill in a temple next to their capital. It was called Aldia, the White Tree, surrounded by a great tribute to the gods. But when the great kingdom fell to darkness, the new Dark Lord converted the temple to evil, mangling the tree and setting it ablaze in order to burn the first sacrifice. It's said that the fire never burned out, and one can only imagine the dark experiments done in the shadow of Aldia. As the greatest minds converge on the site, they would go missing, replaced by the dark beasts that roamed its halls. Some say their minds were not their own, and were in fact controlled by some outside force. Whether by influence or dominance, the Ring Race, or Nazgul, were born into Middle-earth. This is why Aldia is still a word in use in Quenyan, meaning tree shadow. Rather than being a compound of two words, it keeps its sound, but has an expanded definition based on cultural history which is an example of an idiom. Like, stars were kindled to give hope to the elves so that we find the Undying Lands. If a star is pale, it's waning, and it's losing hope. You could even say it was forlorn. For example, Uncle Gale. His Sindarin, literally, for pale star. We've discussed the sun, the moon, the stars, Learned about the light they shine, the darkness that retreats. Huh. The song about finding a gift. An actual winter wonderland. People dressed like idiots who are in love with the tree part. Nut jobs who are in love and fixate on the spirit part. We did have a tree lighting. That sucked. Alright, we got souls must covered. Let's go to the new year. So, in Elvish, you say... Matare, which is Quenyan, from Meta, ending, and Are, the day, meaning the daylight's end. A synonym for Are, meaning daylight, is Kala. If you were to put Kala with Meta, you would get Kalamit, daylight's end. I hope your own Kalamit was glorious and may we all count many more. Today's focus on idioms was an 11th hour rewrite that drew much inspiration from the comments on my first video. The community response has been overwhelmingly positive, and the criticisms have been fair and constructive. This community truly exemplifies quality. As the series progresses, I will fill in the idiomatic gaps that I have created so far from the simple, 
like the Quenyan Lawn, a deep pool, being idiomatic for abyss in Japanese, to the more esoteric, such as Kirin, being the spot in front of the spirit trees as the light shifted from one tree to the other, a goddess danced with just the traces of gold and silver light, inspiring the elvish idiom for a new moon, and everything in between as we continue to examine all the proper nouns in this incredible trilogy. I'm Fontis, but before I go, remember the nightingale from the song about Irithyll? Her full name is Luthien Tunaville, which means the Enchantress Dusk, a beautiful daughter of divinity whose adventures include a wolf, golden sorceries, and escaping the abyss. Now. The word dusk in Quenyan just so happens to mean moth, which is idiomatic in Japanese as a moonlight butterfly. Tolkien drew much of the inspiration for the character from his real-life wife. So beloved was the nickname that it was engraved on her headstone. Now Tolkien and his real-life dusk had a daughter together. Her name just so happened to be Priscilla. <laughs>